What's going on guys, Spencer Harris here, and this week we've got a very fun one for you. If you're just starting in Final Cut and you're wondering how to color grade, this is gonna be a video for you. And it's very simple. Um, I know it can be a little intimidating, but uh, let me just show you. Real quick, I just wanna go ahead and clarify the difference between color grading and color correction. Color correction is going to be when you need to fix something that was shot incorrectly or you just need to tweak something. Let's just say that your white balance was uh, maybe set to cloudy and it was sunny outside or it was it was set to tungsten but you were shooting in fluorescent light or vice versa but let's just say that your white balance was off. So you're gonna wanna go in there and do color correction before you jump into color grading. This week we're not gonna be touching color correction, we're just gonna be jumping into color grading and maybe we'll do color correction on another video but color grading is where you have a lot of fun. Color grading is when you can just sort of play, it's sort of up to you, the artist, to get the look that you're going for. May it be a cinematic look, may it be a very natural look with you know colors just popping out a little bit more whatever you want to do but color grading is is basically up to the artist and whatever they're trying to go for or get across in the feeling or the tone of the piece that they're editing now you do want to make sure that you are running the most updated version of Final Cut I believe maybe it was a year ago year and a half ago um, that they added all of these different color correction and color grading options in the software so if you are not up to date on your software go ahead and make sure that you are downloading and working off of the latest version of Final Cut Pro so that you can do all of these really cool tricks and color grades yourself. Now let's just go ahead and jump into Final Cut and I'll show you how easy it is. You can see here I've got three shots. The first two are drone shots and the last shot is a shot of Christina. The difference between these shots are the first two shots are shot with a drone in a log color profile and the last shot is shot with the 1DX2 in a standard color profile. Now the difference being uh, the log profile, like I said earlier, you're going to be able to pull out a lot more dynamic range and a lot more colors shooting in a log profile as opposed to shooting in a standard profile like the 1DX that doesn't have a log profile. So the Canon colors are great straight out of camera but you're not really going to be able to manipulate them as much as you were uh, going to be able to with a log profile. So let's just go ahead and jump in. Um, I did uh, incorporate all of these shots in my last video which you can see here of my trip to Bali. It was an amazing trip if you've never been. Definitely put it on your bucket list. I highly recommend it. I fell in love with the place and uh, I'm glad I shot so much footage because it's just making my... I can just go back to that video and watch it whenever I want. I'm just sort of transported there. Anyway, you don't care. if Let's just go ahead and jump into color grading. So here the first thing I'm going to do is since my trees are silhouetted and I was going for that, I'm going to focus on the ocean here in the sunset. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and clean up my workspace here. I don't need anything over here to the left, so we're going to get rid of that. And then I do want to see my video scopes and all of that. So click view, show in viewer, video scopes. This is going to be a nice reference point. Um, any step that you make, you're going to be able to see the effect it's going to have on all of your graphs over here to the left. If something's too light or something's too dark, you're gonna see how it affects these graphs to the left. So just keep an eye on that as I go through this tutorial and uh, and just you know take a peek at that and see how what I'm doing is affecting these grids. First thing I wanna do is, since this is a log profile, is make it not look so flat. And the way I do that is I go down here to, first thing I guess I should tell you is when you do click over here, um, in your inspector. You want to click this triangle here and then the first thing that's going to pop up is your standard colored board. Now before Final Cut added all of these color correction and color grading um, effects, this was basically all we had to work with and it sucked. You had to download a third party plugin and it was just horrible and I think Final Cut picked up on that and they just went ahead and integrated all of these color tools within the software like they should have done years ago. Now we have it and it's it's much more streamlined and uh, makes the workflow a lot easier. So we go ahead and click this triangle. It's going to come up with the color board here. We don't really want to mess with that. The first thing I do is come down here to color curves. Now this is going to make the profile, instead of looking so flat and sort of hazy gray, we're going to bring these colors back to life starting here. Now I click my control point here on Luma and I bring it down just a little bit and you can see it's starting to really add some contrast to the to the picture and then I bring this up just a little bit not too much 
And then you can see here when I toggle it on and off already, we're looking pretty good. Next thing I wanna do is go ahead and mess with my hue and saturation curves. And this is where it gets fun. You have a few options here, hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, and hue versus luma. There's a few other ones down here um, that you can mess with, but I usually stay away from those and, uh, and just work with these three options. And I, the best way to remember it, what each one of these effects is, just look at, at, the, at the word to the right. Um, we're looking at hue here, saturation here, and luma here. I'm gonna be playing with saturation. So instead of kind of guessing what colors need to be brought up, I'm gonna come over here and get my ink dropper. And I really like this orange here and I'm gonna bring that out. So I'm just gonna click here. And then already this point here with the gray bar is telling me that that is the color that I just chose to mess with. So we're just gonna bring this up. You don't wanna go crazy with it. And that looks good to me. Now, you don't want to then color pick within the same window. If you wanna go ahead and let's say I wanna mess with these blues up here, I wanna add another hue and saturation curve. All right, we're gonna come down here to saturation, get my ink dropper, and come up here to the bluest part of the image. And for some reason it's reading red. Let's see how that affects it. Actually doesn't look too bad. I like that, uh, but it, I didn't get the effect that I wanted to do. So again, I want to manipulate another color, hue and saturation curves. So this is where, since the ink dropper didn't pick the blue up here, I'm going to go ahead and just choose my points that I want to mess with. So let's just go ahead and click there to about there, and bring this up slightly. Yeah, we're getting some, a little bit of blue, but there we go. And let's look at this. Oh, that looks so good. So already I will show you, we come back here and just toggle on and off all the effects. Look at that, look at the difference right there. That is absolutely incredible. I'm pretty happy with that actually. I'm not overdoing it. You know, it's really getting that the colors to pop exactly how it looked like out on the beach. The sunsets in Bali are incredible. Okay, here we go. Um, the purpose of this second clip is just to show you that you don't have to do that. If you have something that has a similar color profile, you don't have to go in and do this to every single clip. I didn't know that you didn't have to do that when I first started editing and my... I probably could have saved hours, if not a grand total of days, had I known this. So if you wanna if you wanna apply the same color correction from one clip to another, all you wanna do is highlight the clip that you colored, Command C, you're gonna be copying it. Come over here to the clip that you want to apply those settings to and Command Shift V. This is gonna come up. I'm not gonna mess with my transform, so we're gonna take all of those off. And yes, I want to I want to paste all of these effects right here. All of the effects that I just added to that one clip. And paste. Boom. Right there. Isn't it amazing? Okay, and I'll just show you, I'll toggle on and off the effects here. Very gray, very hazy, and then we make those colors pop. So that's how you do that. Do not do color correction on every single clip if it is shot on the same profile with the same colors in the same place. This is just gonna save you so much time. Now we're gonna come over here to the 1DX2 footage that was shot in a standard camera Canon color profile. Um, here, let's just open up this window a little bit. Okay. What I want to do is I want to bring out the teal and the blues in her dress and I want to bring up some of the greens that are around her. Um, I'm not really going to be messing with the curves, although I do want to see what happens when I do. So let's go back here to color curves and let's see what this does. Okay, we'll bring it down just a little bit. We'll raise this. So I'm getting more of a an S curve here with the standard uh, color profile from Canon. 
seems to be working just fine. Now, like the clip before, hue and saturation curves, um, and we're just gonna be coming here to uh, saturation. And when you do this, when you're trying to bring up greens, it's gonna read um, over here in the saturation bar as yellow. Um, that was a little confusing to me, but I wanna find the greenest part here. Let's click one of these leaves. So you can see it's sort of hovering between the yellow and the green, and that makes sense because yellow is a part of green. So we're just gonna bring this up just a little bit. If you go crazy overboard with it, it's gonna be absolutely noticeable, and usually you wanna go for subtle color grading. So let's just do about half of that, and then let's add another hue and saturation curve. And let's bring out some of the teal in her dress. There we go. And then I'm gonna add another hue and saturation curve and just pick the teal all the way to the blue. And that's gonna bring up some of the blue in her dress right around here. And you can see when I come back over here, let's toggle on and off the effects. Looks nice. It's punching with color. It's not too much. I like it a lot. And, uh, and there we go. I think I'm done. All of these shots look great. Let's take a look. Oh, I'm still rendering, so it's a little choppy, but I'll go ahead and throw it up here. Doesn't that look good? Doesn't it look so much better? Um, you can see uh, the comparison between the top and the bottom that uh, there is a huge difference. And uh, like I said earlier, when you can shoot and log, definitely do it because you're just gonna be able to pull out a lot more from that image as opposed to playing around with a standard uh, color profile shot in camera. And that's about it. If there's anything else you guys wanna learn about color grading, please throw it in the comments below. I'm gonna be jumping into the color wheels and um, a few more of those options in another video. But, uh, you know, for my basic color grading needs, this does it. It's just bringing down those curves to an S curve and then just playing around with the saturation of those colors. And, uh, and yeah, I'm happy. So anyway, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please uh, like this video and uh, comment down below and, and I'll, I'll see you on the next one. All right.